Hey there! In this video tutorial I'll be showing you how to create rock formations for your environment. Um, the rock formations that we'll be creating will be something quite similar to what we have here in the CryEngine. As you can see here, uh, what I have for example is just simple landscape with few rock models placed to them to add some variations and a bit more of detail. Um, they'll be modeled in a way where you can uh, reuse them a bunch of times. Uh, let's say for example I just could grab this model here place it next to uh, my terrain and I could just duplicate it and rotate it around and still get a fairly different result okay so um, the main applications that I'll be using first I'll start off by using Maya where I'll create a base mesh uh, it's pretty much going to be a simple cube or a rectangular cube uh, that will be exported to Modbox. So in Modbox I'll be creating very basic rock models. Um, uh, think of it as the process of creating your building blocks for creating your final has uh, high resolution mesh. Now once we're done creating these building blocks in Modbox we'll just export them uh, to 3D codes where we're going to merge all these parts together to create a high resolution mesh through voxel sculpting. Um, once the high resolution mesh, which is pretty much the high poly mesh, do is done, we'll just export the same mesh in two different versions. So the first mesh, uh, the first version is going to be the high poly mesh, which is going to be used for rendering out a normal map and an ambient, ambient occlusion map. and uh, the medium and the second version is going to be medium resolution mesh, which is going to be used in Mesh Lab, where we're going to generate a low poly mesh for your uh, game engine, uh, CryEngine 3 or UDK. So uh, once we're done creating the UVs in Maya for our low poly mesh, we'll go into X Normal, where we're going to render out the normal map and ambient occlusion map. We'll look into some options and um, different possibilities that could might help you speed up the process of rendering out your texture maps. Uh, Crazy Bump will also be used in the texture process. We'll generate we'll generate out a edge highlight map from the normal map, output it from X normal, uh, and also we'll generate out a detailed normal map from a photo sourced texture to be overlaid on the uh, original normal map rendered from X normal. Of course all these textures will be put together in Photoshop and also you need to keep in mind that Modbox will also be used in the texture process for creating our color, um, our color texture. Once we're done creating the model, the UVs, the texture, the diffuse texture, the final normal map, we'll set it up to be exported to CryEngine 3, which means that we'll set up level of details uh, and collisions, uh, as well as materials. Uh, we'll do the same for UDK. Um, for UDK, I'll do that in a different uh, video, uh, because I think it's, it needs more time and it's going to be a bit more complex. So yeah, in UDK we'll just look into creating our custom materials with custom lighting models and have it uh, fit, uh, I'd say blend almost perfectly with your landscape because sometimes when you bring an asset, uh, let's say a rock model and you want to put it next to your uh, cliff just like I did here in the CryEngine, you'd see you have very noticeable uh, difference in shading. Uh, sometimes your rock model is going to be brighter even though the diffuse texture is pretty much or exactly the same. So we'll, uh, I'll show you a solution for that in UDK later on in a different video tutorial. So uh, this video tutorial is pretty much is more of a workflow that I'm showing you than a tutorial. Uh, it is aimed towards uh, intermediate users which means uh, they'll expect from you that you know how to uh, create UVs for your models, that you, you know the basics of uh, uh, creating assets for game engines, uh, next-gen game, engine, game, game engines as, as UDK or CryEngine. Um, 
So uh, this is really not for uh, a beginner. Uh, but even if you're a beginner, it should give you a good idea of the process that you need to go through for creating these kind of assets. You'll also be able to follow, follow this tutorial if you're a 3D Studio Max user or any uh, you, or if you use any kind of other 3D package. You notice that most of these steps can be done in a single package. For example, we could have skipped using Modbox and just used 3D codes later on. But I'll explain in the video tutorial uh, later on the reasons why I like to use Modbox for creating, uh, for sculpting uh, than 3D codes and vice versa. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, it should be on maybe today or tomorrow. I'm not sure if I get the time, but don't worry. I'll be doing this uh, video and just keep an eye on uh, my YouTube channel and it's, it'll be there. All right. So I'll see you guys later on.